kind of see him progressing throughout? And did the game just slow down for him, or what? Yeah, I mean, I, he, just, he had to make some plays at the end, which I knew that was going to happen. And when it was his time to make plays, I mean, he made them. I don't know if it was a, I don't know if it was a deal where he couldn't have made them at the beginning. Probably could. You know, I didn't want to go out there and put the whole game on him at the beginning. But I also knew that at some point in the game, he was going to have to make a, a crucial throw and or a couple. And and when those times came, he he came through for sure. Did he kind of graduate on that throw over the middle to Colby? I mean, he's leading on, he's throwing to a spot. Had to deliver it with confidence. Was that like the moment? Very astute observation. Yeah, that was a that was a small window. He don't make that throw, we don't win the game. I mean, that's third down, third and long. They went three double cloud. They dropped eight. Windows were small. I mean, he ripped it through there. There's four people standing within four or five yards, and yeah, he. You know, we had to use our timeout to play before, too. There was a little bit of miscommunication based on, you know, signaling to a new quarterback and all the different stuff that goes into that. But um, but that was a crucial play in the game. As a, uh, as a coach, you know, obviously you've taken him from walking out of high school here to having to play against one of the top defenses in the country against Clemson, I guess, what, nine, nine, ten months later. Um, is it almost like a proud parent? Is it like like what's what's going through your head? Well, you I mean, I like I like for other people to see the growth of players. You know, I mean, doing it in practice is one thing, but doing it in front of the fans, in front of everybody, is a whole other deal. Especially in that setting against them. And so, um, yeah, I was very proud of him, and the way he handled himself throughout the course of the game, I thought was was really remarkable for a true freshman. You know, he was composed from the beginning to the end. There was very few, you know, communication between me and him that got uh, confused, which is, it's harder than people think. You know, our, our signaling and the way I signal numbers in, script numbers and stuff is pretty elaborate. And when you're out there and you got a million things running through your head, that's not the easiest thing in the world. I thought he handled it well. How big was just the O-line in terms of giving him time? And, and I mean, unbelievable. I mean, you know, we, we knew we were going to have to run the ball. You know, which, you know, obviously I feel like we have the best O-line in the country along with the best O-line coach. Um, and they came through, you know. We, we, we were physical. Uh, those guys protected. You know, Emory got hit, I think, one time when he flipped it out to Riley. And, uh, but other than that, I mean, it was as solid of a performance against a really, really, a really tough defensive front. And then for uh, Rashard Smith, obviously, Showing the ability to make a play, whether it's a receiver coming out of the backfield uh, on Saturday. How does that ability to kind of have, to be like a multi tool? Yeah. No, I mean, we look, you know, we're starting to scratch the surface with him. You know, his skill set is similar to some guys I've had in the past as far as um, he has the ability to do multiple things. You know, he's not just a receiver. You know, he played Wildcat quarterback in high school. And this is really a process of me getting to know him a little bit, you know, and me getting to understand the skill set of our players. And so the more I'm around him and the more consistent he's been over the course of the season, you know, has, has gained trust, you know, and we've put him in some positions to make plays and, and he, he's came through, you know, he came through huge this week, obviously, and I, I wouldn't think it would be any different moving forward as far as like just finding some ways to move him around and, and get touches. That Jacoby play, how much do you highlight that in, in film? Too? I mean, good. I mean, look, if he doesn't, if he isn't running as hard as he can run behind him, that's a devastating play. You know, it really is. I mean, look, as good of a play as it was by Brashard, um, it could have all went for nothing. You know, and and he, you know, there was multiple plays in the game that saved the game. You know, and that was one of them, and that was the first one, really. But uh, what a play by him, what an effort by him, you know. And I think that, you know, that really talks about the culture that Coach Cristobal creates with effort, you know, because ultimately that's all that matters. And I've seen receivers not do that a lot because a guy breaks out in front. They've already done their job basically, so they kind of just coast, you know. And so uh, good things happen when you strain. 
How about Colby? I mean, you mentioned the window catch, but also he made some nice contested catches for him. Well, he made, you know, the, the touchdown catch was awesome. Um, that corner is one of the best corners in America. It was a good matchup. Uh, the third and eight catch he made to keep the drive going. Um, you know, I mean, I, I mean, he did multiple other things through the course of the game, too, blocking-wise and all the rest. But those two stick out, and the third down one was just – we had to have it, you know. We had to keep the drive going. We had to make a play. We knew the coverage there was going to play. We knew the window was going to be small. We knew the timing would had to be perfect. And those two were, were right on point, you know. If they're a second off on that, we're punting. Or going forward on fourth down, probably, you know. How about your backs uh, play? against the good front and yeah. just grind it up. Sometimes. I mean, just five, six, five, six, seven, you know, yards of carry, right? I mean, um, and a couple, honestly, we we had a handful of other times where if they don't shoestring tackle us, we got, we're out for 40 or 50, you know? I mean, that was really, really close on, on multiple different occasions with AJ and Don that, I mean, they just got tripped up. And if they don't, you know, they're out, you know? And I thought AJ came in and like at the end, you know, those runs at the end were crucial. You know, the touchdown run, the two point run. I mean, he 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 got some tough yards down there. It was good to see. Mario mentioned this. Uh, there's a video going around of like Tyler running up to celebrate with Emery. Obviously, quarterbacks in different kind of positions. Only one person can really play at a time. So, how how common is it to see quarterbacks support each other like that when there's still so much competition? Is that something that you see? Frequently, or is that kind of a little unique for them? Uh, it's probably a little more frequent than you think. You know, quarterbacks, um, they cheer for each other. You know, they know how the position is. And so, and I do stress the point that whoever's playing, everybody is supporting. And we're helping. You know, it's all hands on deck when it comes to support because there's a million things going through your mind, especially when it's your first start, right? So, Tyler, whenever, you know, Whenever ultimately at the end we knew he wasn't going to play, that was my only message to him was, look, man, you have to be an unbelievable, like, support system when Emory comes off the field. Good, bad, or indifferent, like, sit down with him. And, um, and he did. He did a great job all night. And so and that, that video at the end was, was, was obviously, you know, what everybody saw, but he did it the whole game too. Anything else for Coach Dawson? How about just Virginia, what, what they show you on tape? You know, I mean, uh, I mean, defensively, structure-wise, extremely sound. I mean, uh, well-coached. You know, they're, they're riding the momentum of a, a two-game two win streak, and, um, they, and they do a really good job of just keeping everything in front of them. You know, they're structured very well. They're, um, they're structured against the run very well. They're always going to have the extra guy added in the right place. Um, so... It's one of those defenses where, you know, they probably want you to make the mistake, right? And so um, they have some pressure packages they bring, but ultimately they like to keep that umbrella over the top, you know? And so we have to do a very good job of, of maintaining possession, which I thought in the game, you know, the second half we possessed the ball, which was crucial because I thought, I thought defense was playing a lot of plays, thought they were tired. And so we needed to have some long drives, and, and we did. We put together a couple long drives that, that really, you know, I thought gave the defense a little bit of a break because they were playing so well and they were playing a lot, of, a lot of snaps. And so, and we have to do the same thing. We got to possess the ball. You know, whatever it takes, if it's eight play drives, it's eight play drives. If it's two play drives, it's two play drives. But we need to possess the ball and take care of the ball. And so it's the two things we stress going into the game. And we protected the ball for the most part. You know, we had one pick, but ultimately that wasn't Emory's fault. You know, we, we can't abort on a post route that deep down the field, and, and he knows that. And so, and it ended up being like a, a, a punt. You know, I mean, you hate to say that, but I mean, you know, every turnover isn't the same. And, and that was indicative there that like, yeah, we don't want to turn the ball over, but at least they got to go 95 yards, you know? One of those drives, I think, was 15 plays, chewed up nine minutes. Yeah. I'm assuming that that was not in the air raid manual that you yeah. got at the beginning of your coaching career. No, uh, and, that, and that, that's part of the reason why the evolution happens, you know, because, you know, whenever you do have to grind out a, a game like that, it was always tough back then, you know. I mean, 
you know, protection is hard, you know, throwing through those windows are hard. And so it's nice to be able to add some surfaces with tight ends and, and grind it out whenever you need it, right? And, and, and our five guys up front, you know, I say five guys, but it's really more than that, you know, because Cam and all the tight ends are part of that group too. And um, I just thought they were playing at a high level, you know. So leaning on those guys with the, with the freshman quarterback was something I wouldn't – I didn't mind doing. Coach, um, how much does it help that you – I mean, you don't ever want to go into a, an overtime game, but that you went through it and came out in good shape? How much does that help in the future, does it? You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think coming out on top helps because it gives confidence, you know. But I'd rather not go into overtime games, you know. I was glad when Flag made that stop because I didn't want to call another two-point play. Uh, so that was all I was thinking about is, like, you know, I didn't want to call another two-point play. <laughs> the process was, was good, the whole process of it, because you, you practiced it, obviously, a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, I, we thought, because we got the ball back with, like, a minute and something, you know. And you're, you're right in that area where you want to be aggressive, but if you do something stupid, you give them a short field, you know? And I mean, me, you know, I probably, you know, Coach Cristobal made a great point in that situation that, you know, we don't want to do anything stupid. And also, like, we're the more physical team right now. So whenever you go into overtime, you play on a short field. So typically when you play on those short fields, the more physical team wins or has the edge, right? And so we felt like we could go spot the ball at the 25-yard line and, and, and push it down there. So it was the right decision, no doubt. And so, um, but the, the two minute, the, uh, the two, you know, overtime drives were, were, were good. I mean, we got stopped on the first one on a short yardage. And then um, the second one, the, the, um, the screen to Brashard helped at the beginning because it got us 14 or 15 yards down there. Anything else? Appreciate it, guys.